So I was figuring we'd run in there at the same time and go in guns blazing. That's an awful plan. You'll get shot down the second you reach the door. Well, you'll be patching me up, right? Because you're the medic. I won't be the medic if we both get shot down. Well, then it's been a good run, sir. Okay, I have enough of you. I'm out. So it's just me, then. Ah! Ah! Sup, guys? And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class 86... Uh, which number are you? Ah, 23 Ratchet. And, of course, the characters from that one movie that scarred a whole generation. With numerous amounts of fan favorites dropping like flies in that movie, Ratchet is no exception here. Well, anyways, let's take a quick look at the packaging before I unbox this guy. Now, when I did a toy hunt video a while back, I found this guy. It's just, he had a busted box. But I decided to get him because I went all that way to Walmart and I was on a streak to find all the figures I was looking for. And I just so happened to find this guy, which completed. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to get it now. And you know what, it's not too bad. Usually when I display my Studio Series boxes, I have them on the side right here, all lined up individually. Well, anyways, on the front is the little artwork of Ratchet, and of course behind this big old groove right here is the actual figure that you get. On the side of the box over here, you get to see a little bit more of the artwork of Ratchet, and on the other side is a more zoomed in uh, part of the artwork of Ratchet, just showing his face. On the top is the Transformers the movie logo and on the bottom is all boring and on the back is the product shot which gives you a little bit more detail of what you get inside the box and uh yeah that's pretty much it now let's unbox this guy Ooh, that looks nice And here we have Studio Series 86 Ratchet out of the packaging. Now, first off, I gotta say, this is a really, really great repaint of the Studio Series 86 Ironhide mold. The painting and sculpting, pretty good. The head looks pretty good. I see they added the little uh, visor over here, or whatever you want to call this thing, which wasn't on Ironhide. And hey, this time Ratchet finally gets his red hands, which was something that should have been seen with the Studio Series Bumblebee movie Ratchet. However, I believe there's a KO covering that. Well, anyways, the front of this figure looks really nice, whereas the back is, well, the back. Oh, I didn't know that was there. By the way, these pieces are removable. So the quality on this figure is not too bad. The joints are not too tight, not too loose. However, I do find this kibble on the side of Ratchet's leg a little bit annoying. But where else is it going to go? Is it going to go on the back? Nah, that's just going to make things worse. Also, can someone explain to me how this backpack is supposed to just stay there? I mean, it's supposed to slide in, but it'll easily pop off. Ah, oh, whatever. Also, looking at the chest, I could see why Ratchet died way too easily. His spark is pretty much protected by some uh, glass that could easily get blown up when in contact with the laser gun. I have a feeling this figure will most likely be repackaged alongside Brawn for a buzzworthy two-pack of that one scene in the 1986 movie where all four of those Autobots just basically died, like they were side characters. Now, I get they were trying to replace the characters with new ones so they could sell the toys, but they didn't have to make the deaths so brutal. You could have just made the deaths a little bit honorable, which was something they did with Optimus, but not with Wheeljack, Ironhide, Ratchet, Brawn, Prowl. Who else am I missing? At least with the Michael Bay movies, some of those characters lasted longer. Well, specifically Ratchet and Ironhide. Wheeljack turned into Q in the Bayverse, and, uh, he got killed off in just one movie. Just like my boy, Jazz. Braun was in the Bumblebee movie. He got shot multiple times to the point where it looked like he was gonna die, but then at one point we just saw him running around. Tell you what, Braun's got some really good armor. And then with Wheeljack, he was a different character in Rise of the Beasts. The producers changed Wheeljack up. I mean, they could have just, you know, added a little bit of humor for Wheeljack just to make him a little bit more likable, but Wheeljack in Rise of the Beasts was pretty much a side character. Anyways, that's enough talking about dead characters and where they are now in the movies. Let's talk about his accessories, which are two pistols. I have six of these now. Honestly, they could have just added more accessories, like some of his tools to fix up his fellow Autobots. Which was something seen in the Walgreens exclusive Ratchet. Who even got that figure? That figure was hard to track down. I didn't get that figure, and I'm glad I didn't because I like this one more. 
Anyways, Ratchet still looks pretty good with his accessories. And this is the only accessories he was seen with in the movie. Just his two pistols. I'm sure if he lasted longer in the movie, we would have seen him with some accessories. But he, like I said, he didn't last long. So, yeah. Anyways, for weapon storage, they go right over here. You know, looking at this, this could be a, a backpack turret for Ratchet if he, you know, ducked down and then went choo -choo -choo -choo. There was no need for sound effects. And since the peg over here on the tip of the gun is compatible with some blast effects, wouldn't mind if I put a little blast effect right there. So yeah, that works. Anyways, I think it's time we start talking about his articulation. Starting off, ball joint at the head. Head can move up and down. Well, it can move a little bit more down due to this little uh, hinge joint right here. Swivel here, full rotation at the arm. If you're wondering if this can be used as a butterfly joint, no, it just looks weird. Bend at the shoulder, bend at the elbow, bicep swivel, wrist swivel, waist swivel? Okay, this figure's got its priorities up. In regards to articulation, front skirt moves out, which allows the leg to do a good 90 degrees kick. Leg can also move quite back that far as well. And of course, legs can spread, thigh swivel, Bend at the knee, the foot is on a pivot joint, the foot can also move up and down, and then you can actually spread the foot out like this. I believe this is a, it's double jointed, I think? And if you want, you could have him like this or something. So yeah, that's kind of cool. I don't think I have any other Transformers figure that can do this, which allows a little bit more posability for his um, crouching mode, except Studio Series 86 Ironhide. Well obviously. They're the same mold. Anyways, that's really cool. Welcome to the near era of articulation, I guess. Well, with the articulation out of the way, let's get down a size comparison. Starting off, here he is with his good friend, Ironhide, Studio Series Bumblebee Movie Ratchet, Age of Extinction Lost Age Ratchet, Studio Series Nest Ratchet, which I believe is the latest iteration of the 04 Ratchet mold. We need a remold. Buzzworthy Bumblebee Cliffjumper, which I believe he ironically survives the movie. My boy Jazz, 86 Brawn, not looking forward to double dipping on a potential Buzzworthy 2-pack. Buzzworthy 2-pack Prowl, and one more time, here he is next to Buzzworthy 2-pack Ironhide. And the gang's all here, or was. I believe these are all the Autobots needed to relive that childhood trauma for you G1ers. And for you Michael Bay nerds out there, here's basically about like three-fifths of the G1 versions of the original 07 cast of Autobots. Of course, all we're missing is Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, which I believe both of them are set to come out next year. I think? I think? Well, Optimus is going to be a Commander class. I believe Bumblebee is going to be a Deluxe class. Let's hope he's not as tiny as Cliff over here. Anyways... Let's get down a transformation, which I think I remember. I don't know. I watched a video on how to transform him just so that way I verify my knowledge of how to transform this guy. So starting off, what you're going to do is open this up, open this up as well, and then open these up as well. But please be careful with these as these are hard. Ooh, that one's tight. Uh-oh. That's not. Oh, oops. Please do be careful with those as they are uh, clear plastic. Move the head down fold in the red hands do the same thing for the other side untab this and open it out rotate this and untab this side as well and then make sure this whole flat section on the top of the shoulder lands on this grill section right there same thing for the other side and make sure both of the arms tab in leave this right there for now because then what we're gonna do is untab this whole section right here move it down and then rotate it which is a pain for me. And then these two tabs will peg in somewhere around there. And then I believe it's time we, okay. I believe it's time we work on the legs now. So starting off, what you're gonna do is you're gonna move a lot of things out. What you're gonna do is open this up and rotate it to the point where it's right there. Open the bottom part of the foot out and then move this piece out. And then move this out as well, move this out also as well, and then that will tab in. Do the same thing for the other side. And then next thing what you're going to want to do is, I believe, tab the two together. Make sure everything is tabbed in and securely. And then what you're going to do next is going to tab those in as well. Close this in as well. Close the other one in alongside the other two and then close them in as well. 
And then you just want to close this in, which is very hard to do. Okay, one sec. There we go. And then lastly, you're just going to close that in. And here we have Ratchet in his van mode. And I was surprised I was able to transform this without these light pieces tabbing off. Lucky me, I guess. Anyways, this van is super clean, super solid. Feels nice, too. However, the paint does suffer from uh, molded plastic paint and repainted uh, clear plastic stuff. Thus, it looks a little off. However, would that stop you from getting this figure? I'd say nah. Oh, and the bottom looks nice, too. And, of course, the front is, well, the front. However, the bumper and the lights look way too cartoony. I don't think this is how the van looks like in real life. But I'm sure this is what the van would look like if it were animated in G1. I don't know, maybe. Here's a comparison alongside Ironhide. And of course the alternate mode is the same, but the paint scheme is different. And Ratchet has an add-on. Also, before I continue size comparison, I forgot to uh, add that you can uh, store the weapons under the alternate mode. It's like, yeah, you don't have to worry about them being on the top since there wouldn't be anything to tab in since these are in the way. But honestly, I prefer the weapon storage being on the bottom. It's just better that way. Oh, and if you switch the guns to the other side, it could serve as rear defense for when he's being chased or as an extra boost. You get the idea. Here he is alongside Jazz, which is a figure I remember how to transform. Hooray for me, I guess. And cause why not? Here he is next to all of them together. Optimus Prime and Bumblebee would be great right about now. It's okay, I'll wait. Leave a comment down below which one's your favorite out of the three over here. Well, anyways, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's all I have to say for this guy. Overall, solid figure, but a little too tiny for a Voyager class. Still worth picking up if you want to complete your Studio Series 86 shelf. If you want to get him, I believe he's around like $42, $43 on uh, Amazon. But I did find him at GameStop once, so you can always check out GameStop too. And if not there, perhaps check out um, either Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth, this and that. Other than those places, I don't know where else. Anyways, if you like what you saw in this video, be sure to slam that like button. Be sure to share this with your friends as well. Turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss another video. And most importantly, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button so that way this YouTube channel could pass 5,000 subscribers before 2024. Well, anyways, I think that's pretty much it. See ya!